Welcome to the final technical workshop of uh, H2020 um, DT Ocean Plus project. Um, so today we want to leave plenty of room for discussions and Q&A sessions. So we will just have a short introduction by Pablo Ruiz Minguela, who is the project coordinator. And then uh, we will we, we will have the, the Q&A sessions. But before that, I want to present you the different panelists from the DT Ocean Plus team who are here today to answer your questions. So Pablo Ruiz Minguela, uh, who is the project coordinator and also head of wave energy at Technalia. Donald Nobor, who is research associate at the University of Edinburgh. Luis Amaral, who is marine renewable ONM data engineer at Wavec. Francisco Ferry, who is, sorry, assistant professor at Harvard University. Gillian Anderson, who is research engineer at Wave Energy Scotland. Nicolas Michelet, who is IT development engineer at France Energy Marine. Vincenzo Nava, who is senior researcher at Technalia. Frédéric Ponce, who is project manager at Open Cascade. And Ines Tonga, who is renewables practice manager at Energy Systems Catapult. So now I will leave the floor to Pablo. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Now you should be able to share your screen. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you, Melisin. I think uh, all you can see my screen. Um, in the following minutes, uh, I'm going, yeah, I'm going to uh, uh, try to summarize uh, DT Ocean Plus. Um, this is an ambitious project uh, with the aim of accelerating the commercialization in the ocean energy sector. I work for uh, Technalia. I'm head of uh, Wave Energy, and I'm talking as project coordinator of the project. Um, in order to uh, achieve this uh, ambitious aim, uh, we set out at developing and testing an open source suite of tools for ocean energy system innovation, development, and deployment. Uh, these tools uh, are going to be released at an in high, intermediate high uh, maturity level, TRL6, uh, so demonstrated uh, with real um, projects, real uh, case uh, scenarios, um, but is not a, a fully mature software because it will um, be necessary a bit of time in order to uh, prove a larger scale deployment in uh, in in all the projects and adoption uh, for that. It is a 40 month European project. Uh, that has been running since uh, May 2018 and is coming to an end just uh, today in August with a total budget of 8 million euros. But this uh, open source suite of tools is not developed from scratch, uh, but it is continued uh, uh, the development of the DG Ocean software who Produce, which produce a first generation of freely available open source design tools for wave and tidal energy arrays. Uh, so basically what we are doing here is extending its functionality and adding new features. Such a goal is not achieved by a single partner, but a multidisciplinary team uh, here, uh, in this case of 16, leading partners from seven European countries and the collaboration of two leading research laboratories from the USA uh, in order to ensure the adoption internationally wide of these, uh, these tools, uh, these design tools. 
Um, in Spain, apart from Tecnalia, uh, we uh, collaborated with EDOM, an engineering um, company and consultancy firm uh, that is a wave that is also a wave energy technology developer. In Italy, we have Inel Green Power, an utility company. Equally in Portugal, uh, we have uh, also another utility company, uh, EDP, plus um, research institution, way back uh, up north uh, in France. We also have another research institute, France Energy Marine, uh, so we're a specialist, Open Cascade, a tidal energy technology developer, Savela, and a certification body, Bureau Veritas. In the UK, uh, we collaborated with the University of Edinburgh and also another research organization, Energy System Catapult, plus two tidal energy uh, technology developers, Orbital Marine Power and Nova Innovation and uh, Wave Energy in Scotland, that is a public uh, institution, a public uh, body that is promoting the development of wave energy technologies. In DEMA, we uh, uh, have uh, the University of Oldbrook, and finally, last but not least, a second wave energy technology developer that is called Power in Sweden. The two laboratories in the USA are Andrail and Sevilla National um, Laboratories. We started with the identification of uh, end user needs and um, for doing so, we consulted this, the sector for identifying these new features that uh, improve the first generation of the DT Ocean tools. Then we set out uh, to develop the numerical tools uh, for innovation, stage uh, gate development and evaluation, both for wave and tidal farms, and uh, not only for the devices, but also the subsystems. And um, we, in the third stage, we came to the integration of the individual tools and the testing thoroughly of this suite with real uh, projects in order to achieve this uh, open source software at TRL 6. During this process, the industrial partners uh, have been involved into uh, debugging, testing, verifying, and validating the tools with their own information and giving us uh, feedback. Uh, this process is not uh, finalized, but now uh, it is start uh, the or the development, optimization, and validation of the new functionality provided for the sector um, um, by the open source community that we are creating and where we are depositing the outcome of this project, so the suite of tools. Along this um, tool development, there has been another process related to another activity related to the market analysis of the ocean energy sector, they range from the, um, the analysis of opportunities for alternative market, the supply chain, the innovative business models, or the analysis of legal and political barriers or enablers. So what we have produced, uh, first and foremost, is this open source software suit and associated documentation. This comes along with a global database, uh, that um, uh, provides information about components, vessels, etc., that are needed to um, create these project studies or simulations. The, the tools uh, also implement for the first time what we call the digital representation, which is a way to standardize the data formats for ocean energy systems. So the communication can be uh, improved, enabled, and uh, more objective, objectivized decision criteria can be uh, established. We produce um, a deal, a uh, great deal of public reports about development, testing, training material, and data management, and plus five reports that are specific to um, 
to the analysis of the, the market aspect for ocean energy uh, technologies and the sector. These results uh, also were disseminated in peer review scientific publications. Uh, seven of them open access publication were, uh, had been produced, plus uh, three public open source data sets that give further visibility to the information in the global database uh, that comes with the tools. So the software suite of design tools uh, is, um, have, has uh, several modular components, plus the underlying digital models and global database. It uh, consists of uh, a brand new tool for content creation, selection, and design. Uh, that is uh, the structure innovation tool. There is also another brand new tool, assistant decision making, uh, that uh, use metrics to measure, assess, and guide technology development, the stage gate tool. And then we have uh, a new and a graded version of the deployment design tools, uh, which support optimal device and array deployment. And they involve the site and machine characterization and all of the design steps that uh, um, are involved into providing a full definition of the farms, devices, and subsystems. These uh, comprise the energy capture stage, energy transformation, energy delivery, the station keeping, and also not to forget the logistics and marine operations. So uh, this is up to uh, what it was I wanted to present to introduce this uh, session. Now we can go to the questions and, and answer. So I'll leave the floor to Melusine or the other panelists. Thank you very much, Pablo. I think everyone can turn on uh, his or her webcam. So one of the first questions we have uh, is who are the key stakeholders uh, likely to use the tool and, and why? Yeah. So you mean, uh, may, maybe I can take this question or, or Donna, you know, yes. Uh, you're, you're, taking, you're talking about, I understand that you're talking about the potential users of these tools. Is that uh, Melusine? Yes, what is yes, it? yes. Do you prefer Donna to go ahead or I would answer myself? <laughs> Sorry, Pablo. I just um, yes, I can uh, take this question. Sorry, um, I think there's we identified the three main categories of of users of the tools, um, um, but there would also be kind of other users like academics um, who who could uh, use the use the tools and uh, together. Sorry, I'm struggling a little bit here. Um, My brain has just switched off. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm... yeah, no, um, yeah. I, I will assist you. Don't know. Yeah, I think there are, as as, as Donna was saying, there are three main categories of users, uh, plus other other users that might find um, benefit from uh, using these tools. First, we have uh, a focal point on technology developers. Uh, this is a group of users that focus on developing their specific uh, device or technology. And precisely these tools will assist in the development uh, process. We also have the project developers. Uh, we are focused on de deploying devices and arrays commercially. So when the technologies are sufficiently mature, I think uh, the tools can also provide uh, um, uh, um, uh, sub, uh, functionality, sorry, functionality, I was trying to find the right word, 
uh, in order uh, for them to uh, assess those technologies and uh, take some decisions on continued or uh, deploying um, wave or tidal stream array projects. And uh, thirdly, but not uh, lastly, I think uh, there are the public and private investors. These are a group of uh, users that are um, that are um, basically uh, looking for um, backing up uh, the technology development or the technology uh, deployment, and obviously overlap a bit with the two previous categories because either are on the uh, development path or the deployment path. Other users um, can be uh, academia and research community plus certification bodies, which, um, which can, be, uh, can benefit from uh, the capacities of these, uh, these uh, design tools and also can provide uh, some more resources for the evolution of the tools in the future. Thank you very much, Pablo. Uh, we have another question, maybe for Donald. Uh, the DT Ocean tool was difficult to use. Uh, does the new software have some sort of user interface, GUI, added to allow simple interaction? This is a key to update. Uptake, sorry. Sorry, Donald, you are on mute. Can you hear me now? Is that working? Oh, right. So I'm not having a good day today. Um, so, yes, as I was trying to say, that we spent a lot of work uh, trying to understand um, how to, to look at the, the GUI of the tools. And uh, we have completely redeveloped them. So they're now a, a web based application. Um, so you access the tools via your browser, and we've tried to spend um, quite a bit of effort in creating a, a user interface that's um, more more easy to use for um, different people of different backgrounds. There is still um, a, some work to do to refine the interface and make it more uh, similar between modules. Um, that is uh, some of the, the future work, hopefully, that will will continue. But so far, each of the modules is is usable and has a, a straightforward interface. We hope. Thank you very much, uh, Donald. Uh, another question, maybe for Gillian. Do the tools share the fundamental fund in the OES international evaluation and guidance framework for ocean energy technology? Uh, yep, that's a really good question. So the IEA OES international evaluation guidance framework is something that We've been involved in at Wave Energy Scotland alongside a consortium of um, other people from around the world. And it's been a piece of work that's been ongoing for a few years in standardizing both the evaluation areas for ocean energy and the um, activity checklist or the activities. So what you need to have done at each stage of development in order to be ready for the next stage. Um, and the Deep Ocean Plus stage gate design tool fully aligns with this. Um, to the point that I think if you were to use a stage gate tool on its own without the rest of the suite of tools, you could see it as like a interactive way of viewing that framework. So yes, they, they fully align. Okay, thank you very much, Gillian. Uh, another question maybe for Francesco, are the tools Mac friendly? Uh, well, I can answer because I tested it, but probably Frederick uh, would be best here. But uh, yes, we developed the tool, and uh, so far we tested the tool in, uh, in the, ma the major three operating systems, so Linux, Macintosh, and uh, Windows. So uh, I would say that actually the tool is specifically friendly for Linux and Macintosh, for the installation part at least. Uh, the Windows part is also. Mm, 
much much more friendly than uh, was before but is in linux is particularly easy and macintosh too thank you francesco uh frederic i don't know if you want to add something uh, yes to add uh, just to say that uh, in fact yes the the development since we use uh, docker uh, it's why it can be used uh, uh, in any user in any system where uh, you can install docker basically that's the idea so yes it's uh, completely usable uh, on all the three uh, we it was tested uh, not fully but uh, partially uh, on all the three uh, system uh, francesco mentioned yeah actually just just to top up uh, the m1 architecture is still not the fully the integrated with docker so it might be to take a bit of time to actually be compatible with docker but this is a problem on the framework more not not the, the tool itself okay thank you very much uh we have another question um, asking what are the aims of the structured innovation tool, maybe for Ines. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, the structured innovation tool was actually developed based on some of the mature sector uh, processes and the aim of the tool was to provide a structured approach to innovation and this is for new or improved designs. Um, and just to add to that, that the, the aim is to capture the need of the customers, the stakeholder in this case, at the earliest stage of the design process. This then allowed the designer to incorporate all those needs as they develop the, the, the different design concepts. Um, so yes, it is to create and develop innovative solution in a structured way, but allowing to manage risks associated with implementation processes. And in the end, to have a customer satisfied with the, the need to start with. Okay, thank you very much, Ines. Uh, we have another question. Um, are the design tools compatible with external tools or data? I don't know who wants to take this one. I can take it. I mean, um, so uh, essentially, we published the API for uh, all the different uh, deployment and assessment tools, but also for the structure innovation and stage gate ones. So uh, essentially, uh, it's a matter of uh, formatting or inputs, and then. I mean, of course, the outcomes from other commercial software can be adapted to be inputs for the for uh, our set of tools. Um, in uh, some cases, uh, for example, in, in the machine characterization uh, module, for but in this case, probably Francesco can explain better. Um, is already embedded for uh, web energy converters, uh, the interaction with the NEMO software. Thank you, Vincenzo. I think, can I maybe just add on to that, Melzin, that, um, you know, a lot of the data inputs uh, for the tools, we've tried to keep them as you know simple numbers so people can just type in or um, you know based on their concept or options that they can choose. So while there are a lot of uh, various um, you know permutations of options within the tools, we, a lot of them are, are relatively straightforward. So hopefully, uh, don't need uh, much data manipulation. Thank you, Vincenzo and Donald. Uh, another participant asking if uh, is there a demo available for the tools in this presentation? I mean, I can start on this one, but uh, I think if this had been a, a proper event that we were uh, holding alongside a conference as we had initially planned, we would have had um, hands-on demonstration of the tools and um, had a workshop where we could 
participants could use the tools and interact with the people that have been developing them. Um, unfortunately, that's not been the case. Um, so I'm not sure if we maybe are able to, to show a, a summary of the, the tools. I don't know if we have anything prepared. Sorry about that. We 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 were not planning to planning to show the tools. It was more uh, a matter of uh, having discussions. And anyway, the the tools will be available today. Um, uh, Melusine, I was going to add to this that. Uh, well, the virtual workshop comes uh, with uh, some pre-recorded presentations where we try to address the needs of the sector and we uh, show how the tools might address these, these needs. Uh, plus, uh, and th this can be found in our website. And there are also two training sessions where we uh, show mm, some of the main functionalities of the, of the tools. Uh, from the main module, main interface to the different deployment and assessment tools, and also the stage gate tools, I think. Um, so uh, there is some material, and as uh, Donald said, uh, is it the PT uh, that we cannot do a hand-on demonstration uh, as the situation doesn't allow. Yeah, we will send you uh, uh, at the end of the day uh, an email with the replay available and also the different links, uh, useful links to find the, the material. Um, okay, if I can add, just uh, yeah. that we have, uh, you know, um, an extensive set of documentation for this uh, the Ocean Plus software in which for each of the modules there is a tutorial section where you can have useful information and practical information on how to format the inputs, running an analysis, uh, getting the results, exporting them and uh, and so on, both for the core application and the main application um, and for each of the modules. Thank you very much, Intenzo. We have another question. Uh, how and where are the evaluation assessments used? I don't know who wants to get that one. And I'll make a start. Um, so there's assessment tools um, which calculate key metrics in the DT Ocean Plus suite. And then there's also the stage gate design tool which um, calculates, um, sorry, which pulls those metrics and produces a standardized report to give you a snapshot of the overall performance of your technology in all of the key evaluation areas. Um, so if you wanted a summary of the evaluation of your technology, the StageGate tool would be a good place to start. And then you can calculate those metrics through all of the different tools. Um, and I think Ines can add to that from the structured innovation point of view. Yes, to add to what Filian said, the structured innovation tool as well as the stage gate do not have any catalog of data. So we rely on the deployment and assessment tools to provide those uh, parameters to feed into the different innovation areas, uh, state of the art, any possible out of the possible. So yes, those assessment parameters feed into all the different modules at different stage of complexity as well from Early, very early stage to fully develop fully complex uh, designs. Okay, thank you very much. I don't know if someone wants to add something. No. So, uh, Melusine, just uh, again, just uh, is again me. <laughs> Sorry, uh, just to say that uh, software uh, speaking, and again, I'm not the best person to speak about the architecture of the software is uh, uh, provider consumers. So we identified during throughout the pro the, the project and uh, uh, deliverables about uh, the different uh, user journeys. And I mean, uh, and the one of the user journey uh, for which the assessments could be 
used is that the deployment set of tools, uh, namely the machine characterization, site characterization, energy capture, energy transformation, energy delivery, station keeping, and logistics and marine operation will um, be run kind of first. Then there will be the group of the assessment design tools where you get these key metrics, and then will be therefore used by stage gate. And then st uh, structure innovation will uh, consume services from uh, from uh, stage gate tools and uh, the other assessments. So, however, I mean assessment tools by themselves can be also used in a standalone mode if, of course. A set of inputs will be provided directly by the users. Yep, I think that's a good point, Vincenzo. I was going to say that if someone has a particular area that they just wanted to focus on and not run through the whole suite of tools, that is possible. Although the user journey you described, I think, is the most natural way where you create a design through the deployment tools, assess through the assessment tools, assess your stage with the stage gate tool, and then go to the structured innovation tool for improvement areas and, and innovation. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, another question related to the OES info is, do the tools conform to the requirements of the IECTC 114 standards? Yep, I'll take that one. Um, so the, the stages that we have in the stage gate tool running from stage zero to stage five align with those IEC stages, um, which you'll be familiar with, with the exception of stage zero is an extra stage we have in DT Ocean Plus. Um, and the reason for that is we wanted to have a stage specifically for TRL1 so that we could make sure that the tools work for the very, very earliest stages of concept creation when you don't know much about your technology at all. Um, so stages one to five align exactly with what you're familiar with with IEC and stage zero is an extra earlier stage. Um, we did strive to align with existing standards as much as possible in that case. Um, and that was the reasoning behind it. I should maybe just jump in there to clarify that the design tools aren't really designed to work at stage zero. It's mostly just the structural innovation stage gate. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, to build on that, um, how that works is at stage the stage gate zero to one, the earliest stage gate. It's most, it's all qualitative questions, so the user can run through um, and understand where they are with their technology without knowing um, quantitative metrics. And then once they get onto the later stages, that's where the design tools and the assessment tools and stage gate and structured innovation all um, can run together. The May I add something also to this? Uh, because the past experience with DT Ocean project is that uh, the software was designed for mainly commercial deployment of uh, arrays and, and technologies. And um, the conformance to I, IEC TC 114 um, technical specification was uh, something uh, compulsory that led to uh, a high level of underlying deep, deep data uh, to be input, um, for instance, in the site characterization part. What we made in DT Ocean Plus is the, that we uh, enabled a different uh, software functionality at what we call complexity levels uh, that match the stages of technology development. So for initial technologies, there will be a lower amount of detail, and probably this doesn't conform with the IEC standards, but it will be easier for the uh, user to, to have some kind of aggregated results, some meaningful metrics that, that will enable to make decisions. At intermediate development stages, there will be uh, the software will be run on another complexity level. They will require more uh, granularity of data. And incidentally, when the technologies are at a high TRL level, they will ask for the full set of data that uh, comprise information as uh, required in the standards. 
Thank you very much. We have another question. Uh, we talked about the stakeholders at the beginning and someone mentioned the types of developers which could be interested in the tools. How about regulators and decision makers? Are they involved in the test of the tools? Um, well, I think we have uh, one example of a decision maker and founder that is with us, it's Gillian uh, from Wave Energy Scotland. Uh, particularly, they are running programs in order to uh, decide which technology is best fitted to con for continued development. And for doing so, they need this kind of tools uh, in order to make uh, informed decisions. So uh, um, Wave Energy Scotland, uh, provided one uh, validation and scenario, at least for, for the tools, uh, with the experience uh, from past programs that uh, they run. Um, we have some utility companies that also are private or can act as private investors. In this case, NL Green Power uh, was also testing the, the tools uh, with uh, the, 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 the projects, one of these projects is the, uh, the recent deployment that they made in Chile uh, with the OPT technology uh, uh, for powering um, boys uh, or a laboratory instrumentation, I mean. So uh, yes, indeed, we, uh, we consider that kind of stakeholders in, in the testing of the tools with our limited capability in the consortium. I think, and also to add, uh, we've had Buenos Veritas as a certification body um, as part of the consortium too, which has been really helpful. Um, and we've been having conversations at Wave Energy Scotland in terms of would it be possible to use a stage gate design tool as a sort of pre-certification? Because um, I think that could be something helpful to lead people onto the path towards um, getting their commercial technology. So yeah, a, a big wide range of stakeholders have had had their input into this. Thank and just one much. other point on that maybe is that although it's not directly using the, the DT Ocean Plus tools, within the DT Ocean Plus project, there was the, the work package on market analysis that Pablo mentioned in his introduction. Um, and that produced a, a series of five reports which are aimed more at this is the policy makers um, in you know, how can we um, help to commercialise the sector? And so there's a, a vast amount of information available in those and, and also a couple of open access publications, which um, hopefully is useful for the sector. And a quick add as well, uh, we have used the structured innovation in that way to support some of the, the We've used the structured innovation as well as some external tools developed by the Wave Energy Scotland, such as the scenario creation tools and fundamental relationship tools to actually support identifying attractive areas of innovation for investment. So yes, the public and private investor can use the different tools for different design objectives. Okay, thank you very much. Our um another question about uh the maintenance how do you see the maintenance and the future development of these tools i may take uh this question or at least what is our our perspective um right now on the future development of the tools well first of all the the tools are will be are freely available to use and uh, under the open source license it can be extended uh, can be used so anyone can contribute and further test and improve them but uh, many of the dt ocean plus partners have planned uh, for future development and use of the of the tool themselves including the development of new functionalities further testing and refining or the existing code. So um, these might comprise, among others, uh, additional demonstration and validation of the integrated suite of tools, 
uh, the maintenance of the modules that has been developed and support to users um, where possible, uh, and the use in, of BDO Ocean Plus tools in other projects, um, for example, to support the assessment of new technologies. Um, also, academia, MSc or MN or students uh, can download this, the software and develop their own research projects using validating or developing the, the software. Um, this could be some of the, of the plans we have in future for development of the tools and maintenance. If I can just add to that, Pablo, in uh, relation to one of the other questions that we've got, it's uh, quite related to it, so asking how we can ensure the tools and catalogs and assumptions will be kept up to date. I think uh, one point to note is the, the data in the catalogs um, of, of components and uh, vessels, etc., is all editable by the user within the graphical interface. So um, it should be fairly straightforward for people just to update that if they have better information on, for example, the cost of cables for, for their project. Um, but if they don't, then they can use the, the generic assumptions that we've made within the tools. Um, and yes, if there is some sort of radical new technology that's been developed, um, you know, a floating substation or something for a, a small wave array, then that may need some modification of the code. But as, as Pablo says, an open source project that somebody could contribute that, or they could develop that within another project um, and, and feed that into the tools. Okay, thank you very much. Another question is about um, how did you proceed with the demonstration phase with real scenarios? Uh, I can start and then, of course, my colleagues can complete. Uh, I mean, essentially, uh, I mean, since from uh, early stage in the process, we involved, I mean, uh, our um, uh, the stakeholders that uh, are part of the, of the project in the consortium, uh, asking them to define some validation scenario against uh, which they would like to test our uh, the, the developed set of tools. Uh, so it was, you know, a process, uh, a continuous process, uh, also supported by us in order to guarantee that we were able to test through their uh, validation scenario all the set of tools uh, with most of the complexities. Uh, once that uh, we arrived this um, to this stage of validation scenario definition at least at the course level uh, we asked them to describe you know a full user story i mean describing which are the objectives which are the main expectation and the results and then it started once that the tools tools were available uh, the collection of data for their specific validation scenario and uh, testing the tool or the tools that were um, uh, involved i mean uh, in this uh, for this uh, for their uh, analysis and of course check them against the expected results from their own proprietary software or any other uh, uh, analysis uh, they have performed uh, before and um, maybe just to add on to that that um, i think we had this um great plans to use the, the results from various projects to, to test the tools and I think with the, the current situation various things have been delayed and uh, that has limited slightly the scope of the demonstration that we've been able to do within the project um, but um, you know as, as Pablo mentioned in the, in the previous answer you know many of the project partners have, have plans to continue using the tools and so there will be additional demonstration um, and validation of the tools beyond the end of the project. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question is about uh, where to download uh, the tools from from GitHub uh, because uh, from now the link is broken. Uh, I mean, you can't access right now, but it probably 
will be probably okay at the end of the day. Yes, I hope. Um, uh, yes, uh, the the link is not broken. It's it is that uh, which we uh, the I just checked. Yes, uh, on the website, uh, it points to the correct link, but uh, the repository are still private, so that's why it's uh, not available. Uh, yes, we we plan to to have uh, the release uh, today. We are currently finalizing <laughs> some last uh, task. Uh, but yes, the, the the link is the one on the website, and uh, or you can access directly from GitHub. Yeah, uh, just the point is not is not uh, GitHub, is GitLab. GitLab, yeah. Again, as uh, just to be a bit more um, pre precise, I mean probably, um, uh, I mean keep in mind that uh, this is not uh, this is the Ocean Plus. Uh, software which is, has been developed within the Ocean Plus project, while probably the uh, the one the link that the um, uh, the person that the question refers to is about the Ocean uh, the Ocean project, um, um, which yes it's on GitHub. Okay, so um, even if the names are similar, don't. Uh, uh, don't get confused, okay? The Diffusion Plus will be publicly available on GitLab. Yes, uh, Vincenzo, it's just because uh, we just created today uh, a page for DigitalOcean Plus with uh, access to GitLab. And right now, it's just a, a protected uh, link. But it will be accessible today. Yeah. Oh yes, gitlab.com slash DTOcean plus. <clears throat> I was going to to put this information uh, before the end of the, the workshop, but uh, yeah, um, the what Freddie has said is is written on this slide, gitlab.com slash DTOcean plus. And you go to package and registry to to get the uh, the download uh, archive. Yeah. Another question is: Do we need a GitLab account? Mm, no, normally no. To download, uh, no, it will be accessible. If you want to make uh, then. Uh, Propose an additional change or something like that. Yes, you will need one, but no, otherwise, no. Or if you want to report issues or something like that, also you can do that through GitLab. Uh, then you will need, you will need an account. But just to download, no, there is no account required. Okay. I think we are at the end of the questions. I don't know if someone in the panelists want to add something. No? I suppose, um, I hope when people download the tools and, and give them a try, they feel free to get in touch with, with any of us here. Um, Although the project's coming to an end, like Donald said, we've got an invested interest in it. Um, it's something that's been really close to our hearts for three and a half years. So um, don't be scared to get in touch and ask us questions. We're willing to help. I just want to what Gillian was saying. The tools currently are at TRL 6. So there are some functionalities that might not be fully functional. Uh, we've aimed first for stand, uh, standalone tools so they can be used in modular uh, functionalities. But the value is also added when the, with the integration, so with some data transferred uh, from modules to modules. Uh, but yes, any feedback will be really helpful and will kind of help us develop this further where, where possible. And documentation guideline also will be also available in the same repository right so that will also support any any decent tutorials how to to support any um any issues and just to build on what joey was saying one second managed to unmute myself um that yes we have 
spent a lot of time working on these tools and we are interested to hear your feedback. Um, I think there is a group uh, on the LinkedIn uh, website where you can join um, and contact various people involved in the project on that or post discussions in there. Um, and I think the question form on the DT Ocean Plus website will, will stay on online um, where people can ask questions. Or um, as Frederick said, you can report issues on the, the GitLab um, issues system. Okay, thank you very much. I think uh, the word for the end is yours, Pablo. Do you want to conclude the workshop? Yeah, thank you, Melissa. So I'm. I want to thank all attendees for the interest in the in the project and in the tools we have developed. Uh, we have implemented uh, and improved the functionality of the tools and expanded it uh, in order to. Uh, benefit uh, the, the sector. So our uh, ultimate aim is that uh, there is an uptake of the tool by the sector. Um, this is the the main motivation. We did these um, design tools open source and are available for everyone to download. And our aim, as it has been pointed out, is that uh, we, we didn't have uh, the objective of uh, finalizing a fully commercial software. So uh, we would like to have this open source community around the project that will uh, enable to uh, improve, validate, use, uh, demonstrate the software. Uh, so there is again the, the, um, the link to for uh, to to be downloaded, uh, still private, uh, but if you come back tomorrow, uh, probably you will be able to start loading the software and testing it. Um, if you have any query, please contact us through the GitLab and uh, we'll try to respond to you as soon as possible and give you support always uh, provided our uh, resources or capabilities to do so. Thank you very much.